Good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We're trying to make sense of this crazy Arizona market. It certainly doesn't get any easier every week that I take a look at it. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, kind of a warning um, on some of the things that we're seeing from some investors, not all of them. So I'm not going to paint investors with a broad brush on this one, uh, but seeing some things in uh, real estate Facebook forums that uh, I thought I'd point out to you. And then I'm going to go through the inventory numbers and where we're at today and kind of drill down and show you where mortgage rates are and what's going on in the <coughs> new build communities. So good morning, good morning, and welcome. And uh, good morning, Rock and, Rock and Roll USA. These YouTube names are great. I, <laughs> some of them I can't pronounce. So what's going on when I say investors, uh, you know, beware? Well. Here's a tactic that I saw that I hope dies as quickly as it's showing up. So investors right now, um, they're seeing a slowing market and they're seeing that you're having a harder time selling your home than you did a few months ago. And we'll show you those numbers. And uh, so they're coming in and giving you an offer that's obviously lower than what you were going to try and get anyway. And they're offering you a quick 14 day close, which is what's nice about the uh, cash investors and good morning, Jackie. And so you get all attracted to this and uh, they, they're writing these offers and sending in an approved Binzer. Now a Binzer is a buyer inspection report and seller response. So when they turn in the offer, they're saying, Hey, we accept the house as is. Here's the document. Let's go forward. And that's terrific stuff, you know, because usually you have a 10 day inspection period. They inspect it. Then you go back and forth talking about repairs. But some of the investors are coming in and going here right off the bat. Not only are we saying we're going to buy it as is, but we're going to send you the form right off the bat. So they send you the form. You're getting ready to close. You're going to close in a couple of days. You've scheduled your appointment to sign the documents. Lo and behold, the agent on the other side has sent out a an addendum and said, hey, they sent out their general contractor yesterday uh, to look at the house and there's some repairs we just can't live with. You need a new roof and a, probably a new electrical panel. So we need to adjust the price. And here's the new price. And you're sitting there, wait, we're going to close in two days. You're sending me an addendum, addendum to adjust the price. And now they're, they're putting the hammer to you. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to get this deal done, you got to sign this addendum. Otherwise we're walking away. And indeed they will walk away. Can they? Yes, they can walk away right up to the day of closing. How do they get away with this? Well, they lose their earnest money. How do you defend yourself from something like this? I see it over and over again, <laughs> especially with iBuyers. And especially when Zillow was first out there, they were giving you a $1,000 good faith deposit. And then when they started canceling contracts, you get your $1,000 back. If you're 14, 10 days into a contract, a 14-day contract, Chances are you're either moving, packing, you're ready to go. And if they bail out, you better get more than $1,000. I would not enter into an agreement with an, invest, an investor. First, you have to be able to pronounce the word. I wouldn't enter into an agreement with them without a minimum $5,000 earnest money. Because if they're going to bail at the last minute, you might as well keep that $5,000 to help you with all of the pain that you've gone through and to cushion you a little bit. Because when you've put, you know, chances are you probably put your market, your house on the market on the MLS and that's how they found you. And they came to you and offered you this, this sweet deal. So that's just a heads up. Beware. Um, when you do get an offer from, uh, from an investor, I hope you're working with a real estate agent. Um, if you're not uh, reach out to one, reach out to me. Uh, because it can get kind of tricky. There's still a lot of forms, a lot of things going on out there. And they like to swoop in if they think that you're desperate. And some people right now are actually a little, little desperate. Because we have, this morning, 17,901 listings on the market. With 4,290 going under, coming up on the, uh, do Vegas says say no to investors. Sometimes the only offer you get. Um, we have 4,000. 290 homes that came on the market with uh, only 2,716 go under contract. That's a difference of 1,574. See that gap? And this, our list, homes going under contract is going down, folks. So it's not going up. And therein lies the problem. 
And the problem is simply affordability, you know, since the rates went up. And But here's the funny thing. Here's Remember the 0.75 rate hike that they did last week? Supposed to rock the world and change real estate forever? Rates went down. <laughs> 5.13. 5.13, they went down. A lot of reasons why. A lot of technical reasons for this. Uh, you can read it till the cows come home. But uh, I found that very, very interesting. So that's another example of be aware of the headlines. Just because the articles are coming out saying the Fed's going to raise rates 0.75, interest rates are going up. You're thinking next week you're doomed, you're out of it. Rates are going to be above six again. Here we go. Lo and behold, they went from 5.5 to 5.13. So stay close with your lender to stay on top of rates um, or go ahead and just, you know, I, I follow Mortgage News Daily. It's called, uh, yeah, Mortgage News Daily. MortgageNewsDaily.com, and you could follow that, and you'll get uh, you'll get today's rates on a national basis. I also look at the Cromford Report, and not only do I check the listings myself, but uh, this gets updated every Saturday afternoon. The rate of new listings coming on is actually slowing. We were at fifteen three two, and then we jumped up to sixteen one twenty eight, and then we only jumped up to sixteen six eighty. One, Jackie says, I don't think people realize we are over a point lower in June because of all the clickbait out there. Yeah, you got to stay on top of these numbers. So you can see where, where listings are. Now, 16,000 is still pretty doggone low. And we're above 2018 numbers. And this is why here, when you look and you see listings under contract compared weekly, there just isn't a lot of purchasing going up. So I used my shoveling dirt analogy yesterday. One guy's in charge of taking a scoop of dirt and putting it on a pile. Another guy's in charge of taking that same scoop, taking it off the pile. So they're both working and the pile's not growing. It's staying right there. Well, now the guy shoveling the dirt on the pile is working 90 miles an hour. And the guy that's taking the dirt off the pile is on break or on strike. So the pile is growing bigger and bigger. Not because we're shoveling more dirt on the pile, but simply because of this. And that is that we don't have enough homes under contract. So, and there's a million reasons for that. Number one reason is the jump in interest rates knocked people out of the affordability. So we're seeing pricing pressures, pricing coming down, and we're going to start seeing more and more of that in the headlines starting this week, because now we're into August. So the June numbers are going to show up and then the July numbers are going to start showing up and you're going to see price decreases across the board. How far and how fast is anybody's guess? I saw something that was like down 5% for the month, down an average of 25,000. Here's a supply index by city, which is interesting. You know, 100 is considered normal, right? So here you got Phoenix still rocking and rolling at about 58, 60. And, but now if you go to, and you go to Chandler here and they're even lower, but when you go to the areas that have a lot of new construction where the, Builders are putting the homes on the MLS. That number changes dramatically, like Buckeye. Watch this. Their index is 128. Remember, 100 is considered normal, balanced. Then you go to Maricopa, where there's a lot of new building going on. Same number, almost the exact same number. You go to Queen Creek. They're down here, rocking and rolling at 101. So the areas that have new construction are seeing the largest jump in supply. However, having said that, Home builders in Metro Phoenix facing an alarming surge in contract cancellations at a time when economists are pointing to another recession. Through the middle of July, the cancellation rate was in the 30% range. Somebody asked me the other day what the cancellation rate was, and I had no idea. Now I do. Up from 8 to 10% in 2020 and 2021. Up from 15% in 18 and 19. What they're saying is Phoenix builders have experienced a noticeable uptick in cancellations in recent months and presently near levels experienced during the onset of the pandemic and nearly double pre-pandemic levels. Cancellations in May and June were mainly a result of affordability and qualification issues. So it says here again that, you know, stating the obvious that the rapid raise in rights, rapid raise in interest rates simply priced home buyers out of the market. But they said that cancellations in July are more of a function of consumer sentiment than qualification and affordability issues, Hensley said. Uncertainty surrounding the macro economy 
and inflation is leading to uncertainty in job security and financial stability. A lot of jitters out there. So if people aren't feeling good about the economy and they're not feeling good about their jobs, they're not going to feel good about signing on to a 30-year mortgage payment. And we're seeing more and more of that as the news comes out and it gets kind of gloomy. Right now, I mean, um, on day-to-day, -day, we're feeling it with groceries and gas, but uh, uh, we're not really seeing a huge slowdown in economic activity in Arizona. Tourism still good. Uh, you know, you go to a movie theater, seats are packed, everybody's out having a good time, restaurants are doing well. So we're not really seeing that downturn that we may we may see. Uh, all these luxury homes being built, good luck unloading all those expensive homes in this market. Yeah, it's going to remain to be seen, but, you know, maybe they will. Hard to tell. I had uh, Jose sent me a listing this morning um, out of Gilbert. See if I can find it. I probably can't find it while I'm on the air here, but uh, yeah, I think I can get it right here for you. Um, he said, this doesn't make sense. And I'm going to roll this over so that you can see it. And here we go. After I've clicked the mouse a million times, 595,000. They, they listed it on the 11th of July for 595,000. Then guess what they did? They raised the price $100,000. If you're a real estate agent out there, explain now how that happens. You've you've had it listed since July. You didn't sell it, so you raise it 100K. Uh, there's a strategy in there somewhere, and I just don't see it. Been following it for a year now. Thank you for the information you've given. Thank you for watching. Um, yeah, I I see that. I see small price increases, and that maybe maybe makes sense because it shows up in the MLS as a price change. Uh, but why go up? And, and if you're going to go down in this market, you're going to go down, you better, I, I used to use the term, go ugly early. Um, you might as well make that drop and you might as well get there before your next door neighbors do. We're still seeing that of the listings that are coming on, that we're not seeing this huge, uh, was it, uh, it was not the three day, well, maybe it was the three day people. Let me look at that. Um, that's, uh, let's see. We, I call them the three-day people. I just try to stay out of trouble. Um, check, check, check. Let's see. Nope. Hey, guess what? It was one of our guys, EXP. <laughs> I think I'm going to call him. So um, we're still seeing that there isn't this huge surge of homes coming on the market. And I hope you saw that when I showed you the numbers, that now the number of new leases coming on is slow a little bit, but it's slowed because as you saw that chart, the number of homes going under contract are also starting to slip down even farther. So this is slowing the rate of growth in new listings. And the reason I emphasize the word growth is because new listings are growing because of the lack of sales. As you look around your neighborhood, you're seeing more for sale signs. But what you're not seeing is those sale for sale signs coming down like you did before. Um, so they used to go up and, oh, it's sold in the weekend and it's down and another one go up. Well, now it goes up, it's staying there. And the next one goes up, it's staying there. And that's the market that we're in. Um, I'm seeing some pretty decent prices out in some parts of the, the valley and the rates are down right now. So um, it's not really, if you have to buy, it's not an alarming time to uh, buy a home. If you have to sell, man, you've got to be patient. Uh, I'm seeing people list their homes and uh, on a weekend and they're not getting the showings and they panic and you know, you got you to gotta hang in there, you know, give it a month and make sure you're priced correctly and you should come out of it okay. But, uh, you know, it's a trying time for those of us trying to sell a home right now. In the real estate industry, definitely slower for us. I enjoyed my uh, time in the mountains up there. I hope uh, you enjoyed watching a couple of videos uh, with my baseball hat on inside the truck or out walking in the woods and I got to tell you, hiking at 6,800 feet, man, that's tough on the lungs. Anyway, hope everybody has a great Monday. Take on the day and the rest of the week. Thanks for watching.